There were two young people riding a fast motorcycle. They were being chased by two big black trucks. After coming out of the forest and heading towards the road on the edge of the mountain, the driver of the motorcycle was a boy and the passenger was a girl. Suddenly in front of them were several trucks that blocked their motorcycle. Then they fell into the ravine. Luckily, the woman survived. But she was caught by a spider-headed man. While the Spider-Man was about to do something to the woman, from a distance a person called Trans Locust came to help the woman. Trans Locust beat up the army of trans spiders who were holding the woman. He killed them all ruthlessly. Moments later, in an empty house in the middle of the forest, the Trans Locust named Takeshi Hongo was confused by what was happening to his body. He took off his helmet. He was surprised to see his terrible face. Then he also saw a shadow of memory when he was in the laboratory. Then Hongo saw the woman he had just helped. Hongo also asked the woman what happened to him. The woman's name was Ruriko Midorika, but she just kept quiet. A few moments later, an old man named Hiroshi Midorika arrived. He was Ruriko's father and the one who had turned Hongo's body into a trans locust. Previously, Hiroshi and Ruriko worked in an organization called Shocker. Hiroshi helped the organization to turn ordinary humans into trans beings combined with animal power. Hiroshi then touched the button on Hongo's belt. Then an energy beam was seen coming out of Hongo's body. Hongo returned to his normal human form. Hiroshi explained that it was pranic energy. Pranic energy was a constant source of energy that kept life going. Hiroshi also explained that the costume, helmet, and motorcycle that Hongo wore were all integrated and could make Hongo stronger. Hiroshi used to think that the Shocker organization had a good cause, but finally Hiroshi realized that this organization was an evil organization. That is why after Hongo was turned into a trans locust, and before Hongo's memory was erased by the organization and turned into a monster, Hiroshi ordered Ruriko to take Hongo away. Hiroshi believed that Hongo could use his powers for good purposes. It turned out that Hiroshi was Hongo's lecturer at the university, so Hiroshi believed that Hongo deserved this power to stop the Shocker organization. Then Mariko gave Hongo a red scarf as a sign that Hongo was a person who would defend the truth. Later Hiroshi gave a high-tech motorcycle called Cyclone to Hongo to take action. Hongo's helmet also changed to an ordinary helmet when it didn't absorb pranic energy. Hongo realized that Hiroshi was counting on him to stop the Shocker organization. Hongo didn't want to be called a trans locust anymore. He changed his nickname to Kamen Rider. Suddenly, a spider trance attacked them. The spider trance makes Ruriko faint, and he holds Hongo with a spider web. Then the spider trance killed Hiroshi, who had betrayed the organization. Before he died, Hiroshi asked Hongo to protect Ruriko. A few moments later, Hongo was surprised to see Hiroshi's dead body turn into foam and melt. The spider trance then placed a bomb. Then he took Ruriko away. Hongo managed to save himself before the bomb exploded. Hongo rode the cyclone to save Ruriko. Hongo managed to catch up with the trans spider. The trans spider called the troops to fight Hongo, but he easily beat Shocker's troops one by one. Hongo then chased the trans spider. The two of them fought. Hongo managed to beat the trans spider. The trans spider took out his forearms to fight Hongo, but Hongo immediately made him jump high and kicked trans spider with a rider kick. Soon the spider trans finally died and turned into foam. After Ruriko woke up, Ruriko said that everyone related to Shocker would have their bodies melted when they died. Hongo then asked why he couldn't control himself when he became Kamen Rider. Ruriko explained that the helmet had the ability to increase the survival instinct in Hongo. That was why after transforming Hongo would be more aggressive. Then Hongo turned back into an ordinary human. Hongo then apologized because he couldn't save Hiroshi. Ruriko even apologized back because she and her father had changed Hongo's body unilaterally. They walked away from the scene. Ruriko explained that she was not Hiroshi's child. It turns out that Ruriko is Hiroshi's artificial human created from Hiroshi's DNA. Hiroshi created Ruriko to develop the use of prana energy.
Hongo and Ruriko decided to go to Ruriko's house. On the way, Ruriko told them that there were still four more trans creatures they had to fight. In a building, a robot named Kei reported to Ichiro, who was still in the cocoon box. Robot K said that the trans spider had been killed by the traitorous trans locust. Ichiro told him not to worry because the newest trans creature would be able to stop the trans locust easily. When they arrived at Ruriko's house, Hongo and Ruriko stepped in. But it turned out that there were already two strangers who managed to infiltrate. They were both named Tachibana and Taki. They were both government agents assigned to stop the Shocker organization. Tachibana invited Ruriko and Hongo to cooperate in exchange that the government would protect them both. Ruriko then told them that the organization was founded by a Japanese billionaire. He developed an artificial intelligence named I. He also made an artificial intelligence robot named Robot C. Robot C is stored in a closed server system. Robot I is actually a robot that can be free. The billionaire wanted his artificial intelligence to lead humanity to a future world and bring happiness. Robot C was then upgraded to Robot K. The billionaire gave Robot I and Robot K a final mission to lead humanity to happiness before he finally committed suicide. For this reason, Robot I's artificial intelligence founded the Shocker organization to lead humanity to happiness with the most modern technology. Ruriko and Hongo joined the anti-shocker group. Their first task was to stop trans bats. The government has already found the nest. Ruriko thought that she would go alone, and Ruri forbade Hongo to come along because she felt Hongo was still not used to his new powers. Ruriko arrived at the trans bat's lair. She went in alone and shot at some robots that were blocking her. Moments later, Ruriko went head-to-head -head with the trans bats. Meanwhile, Tachibana and Taki watched Ruriko's actions from the CCTV screen inside the Transbat headquarters. Transbats managed to make Ruriko unconscious easily. It turned out that Transbat was a scientist who developed a bat virus to infect all of humanity. He also spread the virus in the room to infect Ruriko. Tachibana and Taki saw thousands of humans behaving strangely through the CCTV screen. Those people entered the Transbat headquarters. Hongo finally came to help Ruriko. Transbat then took out Ruriko, who had been affected by the virus. Then Transbat explained that his virus would be able to provide happiness to humanity. He would also eliminate the evil human population so that the earth could become peaceful. Transbat then flapped its wings which made thousands of people there die and turn into foam. Transbat forced Hongo to surrender otherwise he would kill Ruriko. Hongo took off his helmet and turned into an ordinary human. Transbat thought Hongo would also be affected by his artificial virus, but it turns out Hongo is not affected by the virus. A few moments later, Ruriko got back up. It turned out that from the beginning, Ruriko pretended to be affected by the virus. Ruriko rewrote the code in their bodies so that pranic energy could make them immune to the virus. Then Ruriko shot the trans bat's wing when the trans bat was about to run away. Hongo chased after her. He also jumped with the help of Cyclone's motorcycle. Shortly, Hongo managed to kick trans bats to death. Later that night, the anti-shocker agents were deployed against trans scorpion. They finally succeeded in defeating trans scorpion. Tachibana and Taki informed Ruriko that the scorpion trans had been defeated by government agents. The next target, they would fight Trans Wasp. Ruriko then took Hongo to walk in the middle of the city to the Wasp Trans headquarters. But on the way, Ruriko and Hongo are followed by city residents who act strangely. Then they were both picked up by Trans Wasp agents. Ruriko and Hongo were escorted to the Trans Wasp headquarters. Before entering, Ruriko asked Hongo to detect the Trans Wasp's transmitter antenna that was stored. Arriving at the Wasp Trans headquarters, the two of them were immediately greeted by the Wasp Trans and Robot K. The Wasp Trans and Ruriko were friends since childhood. Trans Wasp was disappointed that Ruriko betrayed the organization. Ruriko invited her friend to leave the organization, but the Trans Wasp firmly refused. She felt that she had used her abilities to bring peace to the townspeople. Trans Wasp has the ability to control the minds of the townspeople with tools so that everyone becomes obedient to his orders. 
Trans Wasp realized that Ruriko could not be persuaded to return to the organization. The Trans Wasp intends to attack Ruriko, but Hongo took Ruriko away. Taki saw Ruriko and Hongo, who escaped without a fight making him want to act himself. In addition, Taki has extracted the Trans Scorpion's venom into a special bullet to kill Trans Wasp. After the situation became safe, Hongo saw Ruriko's eyes light up while playing the laptop. It turned out that Ruriko's eyes light up when uploading programs into her brain. Ruriko was also looking for ways to stop the trans butterfly before the cocoon hatches, because when the cocoon hatches, everything will be more difficult. Suddenly Hongo asked why he didn't feel any hunger or thirst. Ruriko then explained that it is the influence of prana energy. Hongo receives strength after absorbing pranic energy or life from the people around him. That was why Ruriko's father, or Hiroshi, decided to stop developing trans beings. If it was continued, the result would be human extinction. Suddenly, a group of people moved like zombies approaching. They were people who had been influenced by trans wasp. Ruriko and Hongo rushed off to destroy the trans wasp's brainwashing transmitter antenna. Ruriko met a trans wasp in her room. Cayman Rider jumped from above and destroyed the trans wasp's transmitting antenna. Instantly, the city's residents were free from the influence of trans wasps. Cayman Rider then caught up with Ruriko in the trans wasp room. Hongo asked the trans wasp to surrender, but she was still stubborn. She and her bodyguards took swords and attacked Hongo with all their might. Then trans wasp absorbed his assistant's prana to death. Trans Wasp then changed form as well as Hongo. A Trans Wasp flew at high speed attacking Hongo. A few moments later, Hongo managed to throw Trans Wasp. <laughs> Hongo then jumped up to kick Trans Wasp. But Hongo deliberately did not kill her. From the beginning, Hongo and Ruriko did not intend to kill Trans Wasp. Then she asked why the two of them didn't kill it. Ruriko felt, Trans Wasp was not a bad person. Suddenly Tachibana and Taki came. Then Taki immediately shot Trans Wasp to death with a scorpion extract bullet. In the safe house, Ruriko continued to look for ways to stop the trans butterfly. Later that night, Ruriko dreamed that a man came to her. The man was Ruriko's brother Ichiro, the trans butterfly. Ichiro rose from his cocoon. Until Ruriko woke up. Ruriko told Hongo that if the trans butterfly awakened, it would be very dangerous. The next day, Ruriko and Hongo were invited by Tachibana and Taki to see the bodies of dozens of dead soldiers. They were troops trying to destroy the trans butterfly's nest but they died strangely because there were no signs of violence in their bodies. Ruriko explained that the lives inside these people's bodies were taken completely. In other words, their lives were transferred to a place called the Habitat Realm. Ruriko explained that the Habitat Realm was a program created by Ichiro that could accommodate all human existence. Ichiro came out of his cocoon. Then he prepared the Habitat Realm to take the pranic energy of all humanity. He wanted to put everyone into it in order to create peace. Inside the hideout, Hongo asked why Ichiro wanted to put everyone into the habitat realm. Ruriko told him that when Ichiro was a child, his mother was killed by criminals on the streets. Since then, Ichiro wanted to create conditions where there were no more bad people in this world. Ichiro believed that in the habitat realm, there would be eternal happiness. Ruriko and Hongo rushed to Ichiro's headquarters. Once there, Ichiro welcomed them both. Ruriko immediately approached Ichiro. Ruriko asked Ichiro to stop blaming humanity for his mother's death. But Ichiro argued that putting humanity's prana energy into the natural habitat was a rescue effort for humanity's increasingly corrupt behavior. Ichiro also asked why Ruriko betrayed him. Then Ruriko replied that their father had shown her the true life. Ruriko realized that what they had been doing was wrong. Ruriko then touched Ichiro's palm, and they both accessed their respective prana. Ruriko wanted to awaken Ichiro, but she failed because Ichiro was too strong. Ruriko finally fainted. Hongo, 
who was angry, trying to fight him. But Ichiro instead told someone to come. That person is Hayato Ichimonji. He was the second trans locust created by Shocker, who was stronger than the first trans locust, Hongo. Ichimonji began to transform, but Hongo took Ruriko away. Ichimonji chased after Hongo by both riding Cyclone. Ichimonji finally stopped Hongo. Ichimonji challenged Hongo to a fight. Then they leaped from one place to another. Meanwhile, Ruriko succeeded in finding a way to free someone who had been brainwashed by Shocker. Ichimonji broke Hongo's arms and legs until he was powerless. Just as Ichimonji was about to finish off Hongo, Ruriko approached him. She held Ichimonji's head. Ruriko restored all of Ichimonji's memories. Ruriko managed to free Ichimonji from Shocker's influence. Ruriko approached Hongo. Suddenly, someone stabs Ruriko from behind. That person is a trans chameleon wearing an invisibility suit. The trans chameleon came to take revenge for the death of the trans spider. Suddenly, Ichimonji kicked a trans chameleon. Ichimonji kicked trans chameleon to death. The injured Hongo approached Ruriko. Ruriko touched Hongo's helmet before she died. Ruriko transferred all the prana in her body into Hongo's helmet. Ruriko finally died. A while later, Hongo got better. He wore his helmet again. He heard Ruriko's prana still alive inside his helmet. Ruriko said that she found a way to awaken Ichiro from Shocker's influence. Hongo then met Echimonji. He invited Echimonji to join the government to stop the Shocker organization. But Echimonji refused because he was used to being on his own. He would try to stop the Shocker organization on his own. Hongo met Tachibana and Taki. Hongo would fight the trans butterfly alone. Hongo felt that the action would be very dangerous and could threaten his life. Hongo left his last will and testament to Tachibana and Taki. Then Hongo went alone to the trans butterfly headquarters. While in the tunnel, Hongo was confronted by 11 trans locusts created by Shocker who had completely turned into monsters. They will not be able to betray Hongo, so he was forced to fight the army alone. Hongo found it difficult to fight against that many trans locusts. Ishimonji surprisingly came to help Hongo. Ichimonji believed that Hongo would die if he acted alone. Ichimonji and Hongo fought together against the trans locust army. They finally managed to defeat the trans locust army. Then they both rushed into Ichiro's headquarters. When they arrived at Ichiro's headquarters, they both immediately kicked Ichiro. But Ichiro easily blocked them. Ichiro's strength was much greater than both of them. After Ichiro moved forward, Hongo and Ichimonji mobilized the cyclone to destroy Ichiro's throne, which is Ichiro's habitat and source of power. Then an angry Ichiro revealed his true trans butterfly form. Ichiro beat Ichimonji and Hongo easily. Then Hongo got the idea to defeat Ichiro by destroying Ichiro's helmet. Ichimonji and Hongo got back up against Ichiro. Moments later, they saw Ichiro's pranic energy begin to run out. However, Ichiro was still hard to beat, and Ichiro broke both of Ichimonji's hands. Hongo struggled to hold Ichiro back. Hongo bumped his head until his helmet and Ichiro's helmet were destroyed. Hongo placed his helmet on Ichiro's head. Then Ruriko, who was in the helmet, awakened Ichiro. Ruriko invited Ichiro to send Ichiro's prana energy into Hongo's helmet. But Ichiro refused. Ichiro then removed the helmet. Hongo, who was already running out of prana energy, asked Ichimonji to continue his struggle. Ichiro and Hongo finally died from running out of prana energy. Long story short, Tachibana and Taki approached Ichimonji, who was alone. 
they told him that they repaired Hongo's helmet. In addition, they also kept Rariko's prana in a safe place. They asked Ichimanji for help in continuing Hongo's fight to stop the Shocker organization as they detected the appearance of a trans cobra. Ichimonji agreed. Ichimonji then got a new costume that had been upgraded. In addition, Hongo's prana energy was still stored in his helmet. Ichimonji was able to communicate with Hongo in his helmet. Then Ichimonji left with the new costume and cyclone.